Hey there, how y'all doing? It's Pro here, and welcome back to Fallout 4. Now, for this video, actually, somehow my audio got deleted, so this is just a little voiceover. Um, this episode won't have any actual commentary, I apologize for that. And uh, I'm still trying to work with this mic. My last video, the bass, well, the gain was just too high, so I'm probably just going to turn all that down and um, see how that works out. And of course, before I end it off, see you guys next time. I may have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Hey. Whatever you and Nick are up to, I don't need to know. Just don't let the big metal softy hurt yourself, all right? Hey, Valentine. Let's go talk to Amari. Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. This one's all yours, Nick. We need a memory dig, Amari, but it's not going to be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse. You don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Uh, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right, let's do this. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static, I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Tell me you have a way past this, Doc. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there, and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Thank you. 
appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. She wasn't soft, but uh, first. she loved me in, in her way. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the Raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There! The thing about happiness is, is, you only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it. Focus on the petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back, by comparison with what comes after, that you really understand. That's what happiness felt like. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. It's Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. Another memory to try. I'll connect you. There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. Mind if we sit down? There was always a job for someone like me. 
Didn't matter what it was. Didn't matter who I was supposed to kill. I got pretty good at it. Suit yourself. I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. you decided to meet with me. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you... The first sense weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more, and kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but... You have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. It's... The first synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but... Come to my attention that you've been rather dis... I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kinda ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't gonna be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world, and the world had it coming. Of our up you heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute, but I figured they were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface, relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed, and I had the expertise they needed. Turned into a permanent arrangement, which suited me just fine. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I could see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warm up. One of these has got to tell us something. We're running out of brain here. Ah. ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. Vault computers are still working. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. <laughs> I guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. That's good. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but uh, I never liked to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of uh, her. 
cold-hearted bastard for sure, but uh, still human. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Sure. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller. Even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. Big heads never like taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me, and I made sure they knew it. I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, it came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so this one stood out. They didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. Hopefully it's all just... Find it. Pod C6, down the hall near the end. This is the one. Here. Open it. Finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're good. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. 